Hi, this is Betsy Scott, Manager of the Best Practices Research Alliance. Thank you for your interest in our webinar, One Year Later, Results from the Energy Efficiency Lab Home so far. This webinar is brought to you uh, with the support of the Alliance sponsors that you see at the bottom right-hand part of your screen. The Alliance is Ibicus innovation network of leading builders and manufacturers throughout the country who are interested in improving quality and performance in homes. And this particular project is uh, supported in large part by the U.S. Department of Energy's Building America program. This is the second of three segments uh, available through our YouTube channel. We will again provide a quick snapshot of the project in case you're not familiar with it. Uh, that will be led by Anthony Grizzolia, Ibicus Services Manager. Then we'll follow up with um, information on our sub-slab loop. Uh, Nick will lead that discussion, talking about um, the experimentation we've been doing and results we've seen thus far uh, with a ground source heat pump using a sub-slab loop versus a vertical well system that you would traditionally see in a home. Once uh, Nick's given us that information, then we will wrap up by sharing some additional resources that you can find online on our website. So I'm going to turn the uh, mic over, if you will, to Anthony Grizzolia. All right. Thanks, Betsy. So we, uh, as Betsy said, we worked with s and Homes um, probably in, in, it was in 2010 when we were building the home. The home is uh, built in just north of Pittsburgh, about 10, 12 miles, uh, in Ohio Township, and the, and the community is called Cobblestone. We, uh, we picked SNA Homes because they were a Building America partner with us, and uh, they knew what, uh, you know, some of the strategies we were trying to shoot for on several projects before this, so they had a good handle on some of the aspects that we want to implement in this home. But what we did was we took their typical floor plan uh, that they construct uh, multiple times, and we want to use that plan and convert it to a, a net zero energy home. So what we did was, uh, in general, the, uh, the home is basically almost net zero energy, very close to. Um, but the home basically has, on the thermal enclosure side, it has an R10 sub-slab insulation, R20 foundation, R40 walls, and an R60 roof. Um, the home looks like any other home in the subdivision, so nothing uh, drastically different. Um, if we can move on to the next slide. Um, some of the purposes of, of this home was, again, through the Building America program as part of the research funding that they've provided, but three, three key factors. One of the purpose is to obviously have a very high-performing home. So looking at the enclosures, the mechanicals, the hot water, and lighting. We want to reduce the amount of energy consumption we can in the house by basically uh, implementing uh, the higher end of these systems. Then the other part is how easy are these systems or uh, components in this home easy to con construct. And um, we went through probably five to six months of just trial and error and modeling efforts and looking at different systems um, regarding you know, wall performance, regarding mechanicals, and we selected different systems uh, in regards to performance, constructability, and cost. Obviously, cost is probably the most important piece to this project, so we wanted to make it as affordable as possible. So some of the research that you'll be hearing in the next 25 minutes will sort of address some of those systems. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about the, uh, the HVAC equipment that's in the building, particularly the uh, uh, the ground source heat pump and the uh, specifically the sub slab loop that is installed uh, at the home. It's uh, quite different than a conventional ground source heat pump in that uh, the location of the uh, of, of the of the, the the cooling mechanism for the HVAC is located beneath the basement slab as opposed to a vertical uh, well or a, you know a horizontal loop that's in a field or, or a lake or something. Um, and the reason for uh, attempting this is to see if we can come up with a more cost-effective uh, means to have a ground source uh, heat pump system. Uh, so as you can see in this photo, the, uh, the, the, the loop piping is located 
uh, approximately eight inches below where the, uh, the slab was poured uh, above the uh, the loop, the, the the piping there. We uh, there was uh, crushed limestone put down, and then uh, the the slab was poured over top of that, sort of flush with the porter that goes around. So we'll talk a little bit about some of the things that happened. The, um, the system did operate continuously for a year, and it uh, provided adequate cooling for the home. So it, it, it worked. That's the first thing we can say. So where'd it go? So I'll be down here. Yep, there you go. Right there. Yep. Gotcha. Right. Okay. So uh, some of the, uh, the measurements that we, that we took in the slab or in the sub-slab loop were temperatures uh, at the top of the undisturbed soil, as you can see in the first photograph there, and then also 24 inches below uh, the, uh, where the loop was, is laying. And that was done at about 12 different locations throughout the, uh, uh, in, in around the, uh, uh, the floor plan. Then we also looked at moisture content in three locations, or four locations, three of them being at the level of the loop, and then one uh, that's down in the undisturbed soil. And then we also took some uh, the temperature measurements at this uh, right, right below the slab and the insulation. And then we took uh, temperature measurements and uh, heat flux measurements uh, on the top of the slab. So here's some of the results for the year. Uh, this graph shows uh, outdoor ambient temperature in blue, the ground loop inlet temperature, and the outlet temperature in red and uh, dark blue. As you can see, those, those started a little bit uh, later in the season. We had some instrumentation problems um, at the first part of the summer. Uh, but it, uh, it did trend up that, you know, pretty much with the, uh, the temperature and the uh, the soil temperatures. So we're, the other uh, measurements are the, uh, the three levels of soil temperature that we're looking at. So we had a uh, peak uh, soil temperature measurement of 105 degrees. That's uh, indicated in the uh, in yellow. The, uh, and we had a uh, measured peak loop inlet temperature of 113 degrees. So that was the uh, uh, the temperature coming from the equipment to the ground loop, uh, and that's indicated in red again. So another uh, interesting fact that we found um, in this is that there was a, an equipment shutdown due to a, uh, there's a fan module that had failed uh, in the end of August, and it showed, you can see a, you know, a steep decline in the, in the temperatures. And that sort of showed us, a, unexpectedly showed us a, how the heat exchanger responded, um, and it uh, you know it, it actually responded rather well in dissipating heat. So that, the the previous graph was was what we measured. This uh, the, the graph you see here is the uh, what we modeled. Uh, prior to uh, installing the system and what we thought it was going to be. So the predicted loop inlet temperature, the peak, uh, so it was like, you know, end of August or end of September, was about, we thought it was going to be about 81 degrees. And then the outlet temperature, we thought it was going to be around 75 degrees. So if you were to compare the two graphs, the graph and the, the previous graph to this graph, the measured values exceeded the, uh, the, what we had modeled by 31 degrees. That's a big difference. Um, so we also looked at the soil moisture content the, um, that was in the ground. So as you can tell, we have uh, three, three moisture uh, uh, measurements 
that are all pretty similar, and it's, these, those are the measurements located right at the loop. And then the, uh, the, the purple line there, the, the one above, was two feet below the loop. So as you can tell, it's the deeper you go in the ground, the more moisture that, uh, that we have. Now, one of the things that we, we discovered is that it's drier below the slab than we anticipated. So that has, really has a direct impact on soil conductivity. It may help explain why we had some, uh, some issues with, with the temperatures. And, and Nick, one question. The, uh, <clears throat> in a traditional vertical well, the delta T across the inlet and outlet loop, would, what would that be in traditional? That would typically we'd, we'd see something around more like a 10 degree delta T right. from inlet to outlet. And in this case, we're looking at something like around 5 or 6 degrees delta T. And that, that's an indication of not enough heat exchanger. Right. Okay. So uh, based on the measured um, loop temperatures and published data, the, uh, the expected EER based on the measured uh, entering water temperature um, it turned out to be 9.6 EER. The, uh, then the expected, based on the predicted model, we thought we thought the uh, ER was going to be more like 16. So uh, it's not a reflection of the equipment, but it's uh, really a reflection of you know how well we're dissipating heat out of the equipment. So um, it's it's analogous to having a 90% uh, uh, condensing furnace and installing it in a manner that it functions as a 70% furnace. So it's, uh, that's, that's sort of what we had learned at this point. Now, our next steps, what we need to do is find out why the model didn't uh, perform as, or the, the system didn't perform as we thought it was. So we have to go back and look at the model and uh, recalibrate it um, particularly some of the physical features such as conductivity, uh, the moisture, um, the soil density, some of the uh, physical attributes of the, of the heat exchanger itself. And once we, we can get a good model, then we can uh, sort of give better recommendations as to how a system like this could, could work. If you're looking for additional information on the Energy Efficiency Lab Home, there are several presentations available on the Ibicus.com website uh, via the link uh, Our Work slash presentation. We'll also, in the next couple of weeks, be posting um, some detailed research reports that we've delivered to the Department of Energy's Building America program on the project. Um, you can also visit the Research Alliance website. There's a special section on the Lab Home including some high-level overviews of each of the technical systems in the house, uh, in general what we were trying to accomplish with the project, as well as an in-depth in the news section that features a lot of articles that we've posted recently through EcoHome, Professional Builder, Energy Design Update, and other publications. Thank you again for your interest in the Lab Home webinar. Um, if you aren't yet a member of the Alliance and you're interested in innovation uh, as a home builder or manufacturer, uh, be sure to visit our website. And for more information, just click on the Contact Us tab, and uh, we will get back to you.